Sandy, I had the pleasure of talking with you and the ladies and a couple of guys not too long ago at it, uh, Tomball, Lone Star College out in Tomball. There was a lady in the audience that mm -hmm. asked me, why don't you ask these female police officers why they became officers? And honestly, I've told more people about that. So I just wanted you to share with our listening audience why a woman would choose to become a police officer. And my initial, the reason I never even thought to ask you guys was because A, I'm intimidated and B, I just thought you were just the coolest people around and this is your calling. But there's, there's more to it than that. Why don't you share, first of all, thank you for spending some time with me. And oh, why don't you share why your experience and why you chose to become a police officer, a deputy now? <laughs> yeah, right. And the funny thing is that's why I started this whole organization is because a lot of women get into the business, but never reach, never get to reach their goal of being a deputy chief or a chief. It's really difficult to climb that high. But I think it started out when I was, I was young. Uh, I actually took an emergency care assistant course when I was in high school and started riding on the ambulance in Austin County. And I then took my EMT class and I became an EMT. And I think the service thing was there. Um, I did beauty pageants, as the chief had alluded to when, when we were talking. When we were talking. Well, hold on. Look, now, you grew up in, it was Sealy. You grew up? Yes, ma'am. You were, which, which, uh, you were Miss Sealy? Well, I did the Miss Sealy. I did uh, the Wallace Old Time Fun Festival. Uh, I was Miss Farm Bureau. I did all those little things. That and is so, so cool. But it's a small town and everybody was so supportive and everybody uh, just, they had your back. I mean, they're always there. So I think for me, it was kind of like you nailed it. I didn't want to be in a box. I wasn't, I can be that model person. I can, you know, sit like I'm supposed to, speak like I'm supposed to, but I'm still not in that box of mm -hmm. this is what I'm supposed to be. Um, I'll be honest with you. When I told my parents that I was going to be a police officer, they were a little stunned didn't have a whole lot to say, um, but I remember what my mom and dad told me. They said, you know, we will support you in whatever you choose to do. I just could not see myself sitting behind a desk. Uh, I couldn't see myself. I'm very outgoing. That's, I think, why you and I were so much alike is that <laughs> I never met a stranger. Matter of fact, today is our first day of school back to Lone Star. I was downstairs in the greeting. I just love the kids. I got pictures with some of the kids this morning, helping them find their way. That's just who I am. Mm -hmm. And then you know, this morning on my way in, what did I see? A McDonald's wrapper on the car, on the ground in the garage. <laughs> you had to pick it up. Yes, ma'am. It drives me nuts. I, uh -oh. I, we, one of the things that I mentioned, we were talking about, how do you stay at a job so long? And the first two things I asked the class was who makes their bed in the morning and who picks up trash? And uh, everyone raised their hand, pick it up. We all hate litter bugs. Yes. We do. I agree with you. It's like a character flaw, in my opinion. And I saw my husband do it once. I said, not around me, Bob. Don't you even. It was a toothpick. I said, not even oh, a toothpick. I right? Agree. I agree. Well, it's funny, the whole littering thing. I, you know, I started my career in Brenham, Texas, where the cows think it's heaven. Yes. Where the ice cream comes yes. from. And uh, that's where I started my career. And we talk about the littering thing. It drives me crazy when people throw out cigarette butts. Oh my gosh. So I remember I stopped this kid and he had threw out a cigarette, but by the time I got him stopped, we were several blocks from that location. And I told him, I said, um, you have two choices. You can either go back and get that cigarette butt, or I'll give you a citation for littering. And back then it was about 50 bucks, but that was still a lot of money. Yeah. And so the young man said, oh no, ma'am, I'll go get it. So he goes to get back in his car. And I went, oh no, 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 you don't get to drive to it. I need you to walk to it and then pick up all the ones you find from there to the time you get back. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, You're yeah. mean. You are so mean. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I don't like my little animals dealing with all the, the junk on the roadways. It's funny. I, I have to, you know, your mom and dad were shocked that you were being, you would think your mom or your dad would go, you know what? I know, Sandy, this was exactly where she should have ended up. You know, like I'm surprised it was kind of a surprise to them that you ended up uh, um, in law enforcement. Right. Well, I think it was, you got to figure it was back in the 80s. Right. So a lot of women were not going into law enforcement because when I got out of school, that was 1986 when I got my license as a police officer. So 
There wasn't a lot of women and growing, growing up in Austin County, you know, we did not have female role models as police officers. That's right. To be honest with you, I don't think I ever saw a female officer until I got into the business. Wow. Uh, and then unfortunately, a lot of times we find as females, we walk in the steps of those in front of us, whether those are good or bad. And unfortunately, I came into Burnham where I think they had a female prior to me that didn't follow through with her duties. And so there was that little test of time as far as, okay, am I going to be like her or am I going to be different? Interesting. And I think I was telling you about the limit thing, how I'm, I'm going to the command college and I'm doing my paper on women in law enforcement. And like in any business, there's people that don't belong. And there are women officers and there are women officers or lady officers. And I think you either get in this business because you want to help people. I don't expect my job to be any different than the men that I, that I work with. Right. Unfortunately, there are some women that get into this business and think, oh goodness, I only want to do crime prevention or I only want to be a desk officer so I can take reports. And I think those are the ones that sometimes give us all a bad name. Gotcha. Not team players. They're just trying to, yeah, yeah. Correct. I got it. Teach my kids, got to be a team player. You got to do everything. Yes, Roll I up agree. your sleeves. Now, here's the question, though, to you. If there are no role models, were you watching Wonder Woman on TV and thought, yep, I could do that? I, I mean, loved it. Right? <laughs> I, I could Wonder see Woman. you being like Wonder Woman. But how? <laughs> what was it? If you had no role models, was it TV? Was it something you read? I, when I grew up in Austin County and I was uh, working with the ambulance service, we worked a lot with the police officers. Mm -hmm. And also putting myself through school, I was a waitress part time. And the officers would always come in to drink their cup of coffee and they were always telling their stories and it seemed like it was so exciting and they, you know, it got to come and go and you were, you weren't stuck in a single place. Every right. day was a new adventure. Right. And I went, wow. And I got the opportunity in one of those times when the officers came in for coffee to meet Sheriff Maddox. Bless his heart, he's no longer with us. But unbeknownst to him, he became my role model because he was a, an older gentleman. He he treated me like his own. He was very supportive, always took time to talk to me. All the officers in Austin County, they probably don't even know this, but they were also always willing to talk to me, tell me little things about stuff. And when I went to the academy and had to do what I call my um, little internship, I went to Sheriff Maddox and asked him, could I ride with your officers? Now, I'm sure Austin County never seen a woman, especially not in the police car in the front seat anyway. Um, and he allowed me to do it. And, you know, Sheriff, I think Sheriff Maddox probably don't even know that, but he was a huge inspiration to me. And yes, I did like Wonder Woman. Matter of fact, as a little <laughs> kid, I would go out back and try to twirl around and see if I could really make it, <laughs> make you'd it happen. Great. You'd look great in her outfit. You would. You well, would. you're very sweet. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, since you became an officer, you have seen there's it's it's hard for women. And you mentioned this earlier in our podcast to, to rise to the top. You've done it. Uh, you say, of course, we all struggle in our jobs, but, you know, I'm on the radio. You guys are, as I've learned from so many in law enforcement, you're meeting people on many times their worst day of their life. Correct. You show them grace and dignity. And uh, it's it's a hard job. You've got to go home to a family, partners, kids, the whole thing. And yet your job is very, it could be very unsafe. So you started this organization to help women and men um, be better, uh, learn from each other and, and maybe achieve their dreams in becoming chief of police deputy. And tell us about this, this incredible organization that you started that a lot of people are really loving the help you're giving them. Uh, well, I did it because just like you said, you know, we were saying 51% of the population is women. Unfortunately, right. only 13% are police officers. And that number has been stagnant for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then, like I was saying in my email, that once you get to the above, get to the rank of captain, very few women make it above that, less than 3%. Wow. And so I said, you know, that's some, I have to leave a legacy. I have to leave something behind, something that, you know, helps other people. So when I started doing this job as a captain, I had several sergeants and they were awesome. And I think sometimes somebody just needs to tell that person that they have faith in them, that you have what it takes to make it. And I did that. I had a, 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 a sergeant, first she was an officer. I got her to be a sergeant and I told her, I said, you are captain material. Oh no, I'm not. I said, oh yes, you are. 
And I just kind of took her under my wing, and that was Captain Vitito. And who walked me down to my car after my speech. <laughs> yes. Just a delightful, oh, she delightful is. officer. She is. So I have the privilege of putting my captain badge on her when she got promoted. And then you met uh, Captain Alexander, same thing. She was an officer here. Yep. I got to be a sergeant. And then I put my uh, captain bars on her when she was promoted. So I, I see it as if it's, it's my job to find people that have the potential. It's there. You just have to polish it a little bit because I'm not going to be in this chair forever. Yeah. And so when I leave this chair, I want somebody that's just as capable to be be sitting here, whether it's a man or a woman. Um, so it just became a, an inspiration. It's funny that I'm doing this because at some point, I remember telling my chief, Chief Willingham, I said, you know, I, I think that you're, uh, you don't like me or something. And I go, why is that? He says, why? I said, well, every time I get somebody just where I want them, they promote and they leave me. <laughs> he says, you shouldn't look at it like that. And I went, well, sometimes it gets a little exhausting. He says, no, you should think about it like you're a coach. And behind you are all those pictures of all those football players that have succeeded and went to the pros. That's how you should look at it. And that did, that changed my whole, my whole uh, frame of mind is because I'm thinking, wow, that is what I'm doing. I did it with some male officers, you know, Sergeant, I had a Sergeant Mark Davis. He's now working for another agency. He was the same thing. He was an officer and you just have to see that potential. And I think sometimes people fall between the cracks. And I just need that one person to say, hey, you know what? You got what it takes. Keep doing what you're doing. Or, hey, why don't you try doing it this way? It might help you a little bit. Or sometimes it's just to listen and let people tell you what their goals are and see if, you know, if I've already been, I've been doing this almost 37 years. So, you know, it's kind of like I've, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt thing. So, you know, let me, let me help you, you know, avoid some of the things that may have happened to me on the way. That's incredible. That's incredible. Do you ever get afraid? I mean, when you started this, did you ever think, I can't believe I'm doing this? Yes. I think if any officer tells you they're not, they're lying. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we all are to an extent. Um, there was a situation in my career when I stopped a, uh, I stopped a stolen truck, unbeknownst at the time that it was stolen. And as I walked up to the truck, the gentleman was getting out. And as he was getting out, I saw him pulling a shotgun across the seat of the truck. And what I did is just instinct went up and I shoved him and the shotgun all back inside the truck and the struggle was on. Luckily, there was a Harris County deputy that happened to be coming down the street. He stopped by, we helped we get him under arrest. Um, when we were booking him in, he looked at me point blank through me and said that he was gonna blow off words, my head. Mm -hmm. That was a, a, a change in me because at that time I was a single mom with a four-year-old daughter. And at that point, I went, wow, it could have if I was five seconds behind or even, you know, that could have been a change for her life. And I will tell you, that was a time that I had to sit there and go, really, is this what you want to do? Because I was fairly new in my career. And I was like, you know, for her is like, do I keep doing yeah. this because I want her to have a mom? And uh, the answer is yes. God put me here for a reason. God put this on me. Um, he's watched over me all these years. Lord knows that there are things that have happened out there that I come out of it, not knowing how I ever came out of it, right. went into a burning house once to, to rescue some people out of it. You know, I just, I just do it. And I think it's, you do what you have to do. You're a, you're a mom and, and a G mama. You do what you have to do for those that need you. And it's not until after the fact, when you stop and go, Whew, what the heck did I just do? Um, but that's just who we are. We're, we're there to, to help people and you don't, we don't think about it. You, when we were talking uh, uh, at Lone Star College, we were talking about how some women don't really understand. They maybe be, uh, they're jealous of younger women. They feel threatened by younger women. And, and I've learned as I've gotten older, you know, if there's a woman that, that I think, oh, she wants my job. Okay. If it's meant to be, I'll go befriend her. <laughs> <laughs> help yes. her and say, hey, you can start getting up at 2.30 in the morning. Be my guest. But seriously, I, I wouldn't want her to get my job because I love what I do. But I've learned that when you when you befriend someone, it, it takes away the sting yes. and or the jealousy or whatever it is that a woman might feel threatened with other women. And you seem to have really done well with your officers with that, that, that tendency maybe that women have. 
Yeah, I try. And, and I find that sometimes I forget who I am. Um, I had a, a, an officer that I called up to, to, to talk to her. I think she had a, a sick parent. And I had called her up because I just wanted to say, hey, I care about you. I know about your parent. You know, you're, you're my best thoughts. And when she comes up here, I'll never forget. She goes, yes, ma'am. I went, oh, I just called you up because I wanted to check on how you're doing. And she goes, oh, my gosh, you can't do that to me. you got to remember who you are. And I go, who am I? <laughs> she goes, you're the deputy chief of police. You can't just call me up here. And I, I guess that that part of me, yes, that's my title. But I, I down heart, you're, you know, I still care about the people. I still care about those. I wore that badge. I was on the boots on the ground once. I know how you feel. You know, this morning, just going out with them, there was a lady working downstairs. And I think sometimes I forget people will try to avoid what we call the brass, which right, I right. am one of now. I keep forgetting. And so I went by. So, you know, she's standing up straight and she's just kind of standing there. And so I went over and told her. So for me, that's an open door for me to come to her and say, look, let me let me talk to you, man. How are you doing? Oh, my gosh, you look, you know, start a conversation with them for them to see, you know what? I'm just a regular person. I just have more responsibility and I have a few more years under my belt than you. But you can do this one day. You will be here one day. And you just have this. It's a it's a grace. It's this quiet confidence. You don't need to be beating people up with your position. They just know, hey, she's here because she worked super hard. She's legit. And there's an intimidation factor, but not not a scary thing. It's more maybe it's more of an awe. Wow. How can I do that? You know, I think that's what that's the the way that you convey the way that you are, because you you're you're intimidating because of your position, but not as a woman. You know, you're just you're a friend who wants people to succeed. That's the the feeling I get. And I I have to ask you the messages that you give to your daughter. How how is that relationship with mom being, you know, the top brass? (laughs) Well, you know, at one point in time, she said she wanted to be a cop. I said, oh, no, no, Brittany, um, you're going to end up in federal prison one day. So you can't you can't be a cop. Uh, but she's also in the service industry. She's a nurse. Um, wow. So she also gives. We talk just about every single day. She gave me two beautiful grandkids. Um, so she's also a very confident, strong woman. And uh, same thing. I think she's a little uh, intimidating to some people because she's not afraid to speak her mind respectfully. Right. Um, and, but that's, I think, has carried her in her career as well. I mean, she just got, she's gotten two job offers from her current job. People have walked in and said, wow, your personality and just who you are. And, you know, she's, she's gorgeous, but she's, she doesn't act it. I mean, she's so helping. And I mean, just so yes, she she didn't fall as they say very fall from far from the tree. She's just like her mom. <laughs> That's so, so good. That is just a nurse. Is she in Austin County also, or has she moved away? She's moved. She actually lives in Needville, um, okay. but she works in um, Sugarland as as a nurse. Wonderful. We've got a big audience in Sugarland, so that yeah. is excellent. That is excellent. Any advice that you gave her that she says, you know, mom. I'm just so glad you said this to me when I was growing up. It really has impacted me. Was there anything that you did that you might be able to share with our viewers so they might be able to kind of use that same advice for a confident, strong, well-spoken young lady? I think it got back to what we were talking about when you were here. I think one of the things I told her is don't let somebody tell you you can't because you can. And things may not happen when you want them to, because maybe God has a different plan for you at that very moment, but you always go after your goals. You keep that goal there. Don't, you know, here again, don't tell me I can't because I'm going to show you I can. And basically that's what she did. You know, she knew what she wanted to do. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, we don't have, we don't come from money. So we had to figure out how to go to school and how to pay for our college. And she did the same thing. It's like, you know what, this is what I want. Go for it. There's nothing that's going to stop you. And she did. I'm so proud of her. She she just pulled herself up by the bootstraps and off she went. That is excellent. How old are the grandkids? One is seven, one and two or five. I also have a, a son that has a little girl named Mackenzie. So I have a, a Kennedy, a Mackenzie and an AJ. All right. I've got a Milo who's five oh. and I took him to the Barn Hill toy store in Brenham. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Oh. There's the Barn Hill Theater. And I guess the Barnhill family has a toy store, which is phenomenal. In that toy store, Milo sees a police officer outfit. Gee, gee. I said, all right, we'll get it. He wears it all the time. 
I'm not a police officer. You are. So when your grandkids see you in your uniform, how is how does that happen? Well, the first time they saw us, she, they just kind of stood there with their eyes kind of big. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't quite know because it, it's kind of a, a wow. I've never seen. They call me sweetie. I've never seen <laughs> sweetie like that. But now, you know, Kenny, you'll go around and say, yes, my sweetie's a policeman. Yes, my sweetie's a policeman. So now it's just like any other person. But the funny thing is when my daughter was small, anybody that wore a uniform was a policeman. It didn't matter if you were a security guard, if you were any kind of police, if you were anything in a uniform, my daughter loved you. And she would just take off across the room and just hug and just hug them because she knew there was there were people that would help you. Um, you know, I know that lately we've had a, a rough patch. As, as as police officers go, but I think, like I was telling you when you were so gracefully here talking with us, is that we have to remember that that's a very small part of the population, yes. yep. that the majority of the people are behind us and that they do support us. It's just that we don't hear that part of it very often. That too bad. And it is. It is too bad. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the kids is where I always take time out for the kids always because those little things they remember. Even if you're stopping your their mom or dad and giving them a ticket, you treat that person with dignity and respect because that little ears and those little eyes sitting in that back seat will remember how you treated their mom and their dad. So I've always kept that in the back of my mind. And important also. Those little ears and eyes are listening to the way mom and dad are talking about the officer who just pulled them over because they were speeding. Yes. <laughs> so you got to exactly. be honest with the kids. Yep. Dad did it. Mom did it because they're listening. Yes, ma'am. They are. So I true. agree. So true. What advice would you give for uh, women who young girls who are thinking about becoming police officers? What, what would be some steps that you think would be a good idea for them to get started? I would say definitely get your education. Get your go to school, get your degree. Uh, I was old when I finally finished my degree because life kind of got in my way. I would tell you to finish, get your four year degree, get as much education as you want, uh, then get into the academy, go to the police academy, pick where you want to work. There's different genres of law enforcement. I'll be honest with you, when I got out of the academy, I knew nothing about Lone Star College. I knew nothing about the college setting at all. You know, I went to work for a municipality where, you know, I, we arrested people, did the drug work. I did all those things. And then when I retired, I didn't feel like inside I wasn't retired. God still wanted me to do stuff. And a friend of mine worked for Lone Star College. And to be honest with you, I never even heard of them. I didn't even know they had a police department. So just know that there's different genres of, of policing, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, on the street doing that, or if it's in the college atmosphere, we do the same thing. It's just that we're probably liked a lot more. Here, you know, back on the street, when the red and blues came on behind people, they didn't like you so much. But out here, you know, the kids love us. The kids stop and talk to us. You know, they ask for directions. And it's a two different worlds. The other thing I think as a female, you have to understand that you are the one that takes the kiddos to the doctor. You're still the one that takes off when they're sick. And you're going to give up some little things. I think that the big thing is know that this is not nine to five that you are, you're our 24 seven, you're going to work that night shift and have great days off like Wednesdays and Thursdays. And then guess what courts on Wednesday? Um, you're going to miss, you know, some of your child's games, you're going to miss some things in your kiddo's life. But there's always ways to make that up. You know, if, if there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is excellent. Your favorite part about your job? It had to be the service of helping people being downstairs while ago, you know, they just, you got the kids that come in and you know, they're totally lost. And for them to come up to a police officer, what's going on in this world for a teenager to come up to us and say, ma'am, can you help me? I would love to help you. That is, uh, that is probably my favorite part of the job is, is being able to show people the, this side of, of who a police officer is. It's not, I'm a regular person. I just happen to cho choose this as my career. Excellent. Excellent. I know you're going to have an excellent school year and you're, you're not leaving anytime soon. You're just, I mean, at some point, right? 
Correct. Some okay, point. Not good. anytime soon. No, my chief would probably kill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just great. I had to have you on my podcast because I just wanted women to see another woman who just, you know, the reason you do it is obviously to serve, but you just didn't want to be confined. You want to serve boots on the ground and right. it's got to be a different experience every single day. It is every single day. You know, one day you might be helping somebody change a flat tire. You know, the next day you may be, you know, given directions like we are today. Every day is different. And that's what I, why I love this job. It's not the same day in, day out. Well, you're a beautiful lady, and we thank you for being in law enforcement, spending, su- spreading your word to so many. And the name of the organization that you founded again? United by the Blue. And, and people I, can find it. How can we find that and look it up? Um, you can go to the Lone Star College Police Department website, or you can probably just Google United by the Blue, uh, or they can go to uh, my email and send me an email address, and I will be more than happy to help them any way I can. I think you have all my information. We do. We will get it all posted for you. You know, even if you're a, a female that you're just needing that, maybe that you have that one little question that's nagging, I would welcome them to call me. I mean, you know, I, I, I have somehow or another by the good graces of the Lord, he was able to put me on that path and it was all found awesome people along my way, mm-hmm. but that's not the case for everyone. So I would like to be that person. So if there is a person that has a question about how they need to get through this life, you want to be a police officer, give me a call. I'll let you know how you can do it. That is excellent. Sandy, thank you so much again. Have a great back to school day and uh, bring lots of joy to those students. And we thank you for being on the podcast. Oh, it was my honor. Thank you very much for asking me.